Chocolates last a few moments and roses maybe last a week. How about a gift that lasts all year long? That's the gift of comfort with Tommy John. Get 20% off your first purchase at TommyJohn.com slash wide open right now for Valentine's Day. TommyJohn.com slash wide open. Quick and inexpensive shipping is one of the most important things I look for when online shopping. So if you have an e-commerce website and, or are thinking about starting one, listen up because ShipStation is for you. When you use ShipStation, you can lower shipping costs, make returns easy, and keep your customers happy. So keep growing your business all year long with ShipStation and use promo code wide open today at ShipStation.com to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, promo code wide open. Oh. Uh-oh. There's a money in there. Might drink a Celsius. <laughs> All right, we're good. We're back, huh? A couple of slaps in the face, and we're good to go. Dude, all right, the video's not out yet, but this Thursday, we'll get podcast gets a little sneak peek. We put mm-hmm. tracks on the SEMA truck. Not normal tracks, not the tracks that you're thinking. We took snowmobile tracks. We put them on the outside of the wheels. Just like the actual wheel with no tire on it. The and rims, it, as some people call it. And it worked <laughs> It worked amazing. It really was, happy because it was, it was, it was such... Uh, abstract idea, if that's the correct word for it. And I honestly, I didn't think it was going to work. I didn't think it was going to work. So wait for the video. I don't want to yeah, say Yeah, I was like, wait for, yeah. wait for the video to see the complete unorthodox way that we it's, secured the tracks to the wheels. It's a budget track build. Like our buddy Jake put tracks on his Raptor, and we put tracks on our side-by-side, our Maverick. This is the budget version. Same, same, but different. And mm-hmm. uh, it worked pretty well. And honestly, surprising, I would have expected the SEMA truck to have fallen apart in this video, but the ram. The (laughs) ram is the one that let us down somehow in the the background of the video, which nobody will see. It just completely rattled apart and sounds like it's dying. Every time we drive it through the field, the yeah. field is so rough. I think someone, yeah, we you can't be ripping on it through the field. Hey, that's I agree. the bummer is I took it so easy. I just idled out there. It's crazy. Isn't that supposed to be like a work truck? <laughs> this Ken not take it easy in the, in the <laughs> Ken's ram back there. Just I'm looking. not even like, this isn't like a position. Oh, I'm going to out Ken. But when we were on our way back, like the thing was rattling before that. And he was ripping because we had to get through the snow. I'm like, well, it wasn't broken now. It is now. And we both <laughs> yeah. just kind of look at each other. I don't know, man. I, I wasn't going to get stuck in that thing. Right. Well, but we had mm-hmm. Kevin with a groomer on our tail. So Listen, but. as a true vehicle enthusiast, a little disappointed in the in the Dodge. <gasps> the interior is falling apart, bro. The whole thing's fucking really? rattling apart. The interior? Really? Well, I mean, like you said, everything's rattling. Like, we're oh, going no, across this- the field. Everything's shaking. Like, it mm-hmm. just it, it is making a bunch of noises. And I hop in our totally unpractical SEMA truck riding on basically... <laughs> wheels no tires and it was silent going across like i mean it was very sturdy you even said it when you were with me no it did it was very sturdy. i think the rattles in the ram are coming from the outside oh, okay yeah you know I, I wasn't sure if maybe like the dash you know sometimes like a cheaper oh. vehicle like the dash and shit ends up getting loose and it starts making noise and mm-hmm. i wasn't sure if it it's something in the rear end of the vehicle mm-hmm. i don't know what it is there's a loose bolt or something back there oops i think the only you know, people that might have an idea as to what could possibly be wrong with it would be the two people that drive it the most. Yeah, that's on me. Uh, I, and I drive ben. It the most. And Ben. And Ben. Well, yeah, because <laughs> Ben hasn't really had a daily. You know, you were kind of on me about the Hummer a little bit, but uh, you were driving the the Ranger quite a bit this week. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm like, <laughs> dude, you, you drive the Ram a lot too, which I don't really have a problem with, but, but you, both you two are like daily that more in your own vehicles. Mm-hmm. Well, it's because I'm... Making my my daily, my truck, my Raptor, uh, doing stuff to it. So it's not even my daily anymore. It's funny. Like, I feel like we always buy these vehicles and then try and make it practical. And then we immediately just, either it's in the shop getting worked on or we're getting different things put on it to make it not practical. And that's where I'm at right now with my truck. So I haven't even had it for probably like the month and a half I've owned it. I've driven it for like two weeks. All he did was put a leveling kit on it. (laughs) (laughs) It was just like way too serious of an explanation (laughs) for like what was happening. Because I'm like on your side. I'm like, yeah, it was in the shop. I'm props to you. Well, what are you talking about? No, no. It was just funny when you talked about making it unpractical, but all you did was put it on. I'm not, I'm not, I'm saying we either make it unpractical or it's in the shop getting something done to it. And your Raptor's sick. I'm not saying that my Raptor is unpractical. That's not. Not the point. I was just saying, if you buy a car and then it's just in the shop most of the time and it's not even like yeah. you don't drive it. It's tough. 
Mm-hmm. I was talking to Jake about his tracks for his Raptor. Mm-hmm. He said those things are like 40 grand new. Dude. I mean, obviously they worked extensively better than our track system, but that's a lot of money to put. And something tells me uh, that they lose value really fast because he bought them for 20 grand, which in my opinion is still horrendous. That's, yeah, that's a he lot. He got so a good much. deal on them, mm-hmm. but I mean for a new that's set. I mean. There's so much he, money he just to like, I mean, it's sick, but like. He did admit though to me, he was like, yeah, it it was, it's cool, but like once you get it, it's kind of like, what do you now do? what? It was like. After a point, how much do you do with it? You just drive it through some snow. It's like, nice. And then something breaks. It is kind of tough. I mean, obviously, we live like where we try to film things and do stuff. But I'm trying to think of like where someone who didn't film their life, like what's a practical application for putting tracks? Going, Maybe, to, going to the, the ice, ice house. house. It's about or, and having, and yeah, having it's a like lot of money. I can think of. Having a lot of money and wanting to do cool shit just for the soul purpose of doing cool shit like you don't even have anyone to show other than than your buddies yeah but they love just that. like always break I, yeah i, I love yeah. that too i think that's cool but like imagine like we used to modify our cars before we had a youtube channel and it was no reason other than just like the only people that saw it was just our buddies yeah. you know yeah you just like to do it for You're the just love doing of the game. it for the love of the game so i i can respect that so it has been an interesting shift around here. We've went from all driving, you know, like low profile sports cars, whatever in the summer. And then now we, if you drive in the parking lot, we look like truck guys. Trucks. We got a couple trucks out there, Broncos, the Hummer, whatnot. Did you guys see the Corvette? First of all, an all wheel drive Corvette, but second up in a half electric Corvette. Are they I the did. Same? I, I didn't know that they finally that, Yeah, the same thing. I've heard that there's rumors of it. Did they actually oh, drop like, the news? Yeah, they yeah. finally released the 2024 Corvette E-Ray is what they're calling it. But the funny thing is, is Ken, if you can pull up some of the marketing, a good percentage of the marketing is the Corvette being driven in the winter. What? That's sick. Really? They're kind of like trying to show that it's an all-wheel drive vehicle and so that it's capable. It year round. That's yeah. actually pretty sick. When, when they release this, it's really interesting since it's like half electric. I literally... Didn't take the time to look into it. The Z06, I read every spec and watched every video you could on it. And then this, I don't know. It was the fact that it was half electric. It didn't appeal to me. However, still sick. So that's it, what I was going to That add. is a weird deal. Like, yeah. it just didn't appeal to me. But, like, I love the snow, the all, all-wheel drive. You know dude. that the electric performance is like going to be a better. Major. It's yeah, going to be like way better. Yeah. I but mean, yeah, I can't imagine ripping a Corvette and having it be silent. The it's quickest not, Corvette it's ever. It's, it's, it's a hybrid. It's, so it's yeah. still got the engine in the back. It, it has the engine in the back, and then so 200 horsepower in the front, and the hybrid system powers the front two wheels, and then oh, the engine is in the back. Okay. But it's 0 to 60, 2.5. I watched a, a, a Amelia Hartford, or Hartford did a video on it. It was a great video. She did an excellent job. And two, they ripped the shit out of it. It must have been like an actual GM employee driving it. Dude, he was... Doing booning. He was doing launches, would rev it up, drop it, and then do a like a J turn immediately sick. and That's would just awesome. like tear off and was doing donuts in it because it's all wheel drive, so you can like do right. like kind of you know all wheel drive so, burnouts. But it was it was pretty cool because um it's got different modes in it, and I think it's like electric assist up to forty five miles per hour. Electric and, only up to forty five. Well, electric only up to forty five, and then the hybrid system takes over, but it's still all wheel drive. Zero to sixty, two point five seconds. So when you're, it's the fast, it's faster than zero six, yeah. right? So when you're going up to forty five miles an hour, it's quiet, or is it just like an a you boost? Can, it's, I think it's, you like, can it's like a Prius. It. I think you like can, you can like a Prius. You can be electric only, oh. but it's like if you give it throttle, it's still gonna the gas engine's gonna kick Kicks on. on. So are they still making the Zorro or whatever? Because there was rumors about this oh, thousand yeah. horsepower all wheel drive Corvette that was coming out. Electric. That could Zorro. be the next stage of this. Yeah, and if, if the up? Zorro is like the Z06 version oh, of this. Because I feel like this is dude. just the start. This is like yeah. the base level hybrid. Yeah, I'm sure the next year they, they add guns. another layer to it. it. It is really cool that obviously they're incorporating the hybrid system because it's insanely fast and all-wheel drive. But it, it definitely takes away like that muscle car, American-made kind of feeling to it it's not saying that it really isn't anymore because i mean it still sounds amazing and it's obviously faster than most but i don't know it kind of goes back to what you guys were saying like you saw that and you're like cool didn't even care to look into it 
It is interesting the effect that electric still has on sports car people. I think probably very similar to what automatic had into like probably our parents' age. Like when a car came out in automatic, you're like, oh, it's automatic, I don't want that. But now automatics are arguably better than manuals. Less driving better. feel, but they are much better Perform, and faster yeah. shipping or shipping. <laughs> yep. Yeah, but Dude, when, when this brought yeah, to you by, by yeah, I was like, so I just jumped into a when, ship station ad right there. When the UPS trucks finally got automatic transmissions, man, the shipping got better. <laughs> but Ken, they're so much faster. So speaking of the all electric noise, Ken, could you pull up the that. noise that it makes in all electric mode? Because Ken's Tesla's got this really weird Jetsons like noise. Yeah. The Corvette uh, so, one okay. did not do it for well, me. Well, that was another thing too. They were saying that they still got to dial in that because. Legally, you can't have a completely silent car because if you're like blind, it's dangerous. Yeah, it's dangerous. You can't hear it at all. So yeah, Ken's is like. Doo, 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 doo. Okay, this is a minor detail, but is it just me or does the E Ray not look that cool? Like the Z06 looks. The front significant. looks weird. The Z06 looks way weird. cool. The Z06 looks on. awesome. Yeah. It yeah. looks like but an NSX. It looks kind of lame. Well, the I feel like it should be more aggressive. It's also know. a step back. Yes, you know, it's, the it's trim kind of, level is. It's almost like a step up from a standard C8. But it's not a Z06, and I agree. I mean, when you look at that with the bigger Why front, does it, look so lame? it just doesn't quite do it for me. But I think it might be because the entire front end is paint matched. Like the front lip is paint matched. You know, like uh, when the C7 Corvette came out, and it was like the, the the Stingray, a whole new platform. It looked ridiculous. I remember your dad had one, and we had like friends that would come over that weren't super familiar with cars and they they were just like is this a ferrari like they they legit thought it was this crazy car and then the Z06 came out and the Z06 just looks so much better than a normal corvette mhm i don't know i just feel like this could have been i mean like ryan said it's it's like the middle price point mm-hmm. i think it msrp is at like 104 which is still a ton of money but it's cheaper than a Z06 maybe Amelia is killing it she keeps getting all these deals with yeah, it's pretty cool that Chevrolet they trust her with and that. I saw her video before I even saw a Corvette post or a GM post. That's posters. cool. <laughs> Man, she even got and a she rage out of Legends in it? <laughs> what? Grabbing she that double diff, dude. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. It sounds like a fighter jet. Oh, yeah. It sounds like a fighter jet. It sounds, it sounds cool. cool. It does yeah, sound cool. I think that cool. sounds sick. Yeah. It almost sounds like a supercharge. Yeah. It's like the mixture of the... So it's still a V8, right? Yeah. yeah. It's got the standard Stingray oh, 6.2 in it. See, the more I learn about it, uh, it's, it's absolutely cool. It's an incredible it's piece of yeah, machinery. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And this is faster than the Z06? What's the Z06 do 0 to 60 in? 2.6. Just because it's got oh, rear-wheel wow. drive. You right. just can't yeah, yeah. Yeah. have in a couple yeah. hundred horsepower up front. But yeah, can you imagine when they take this technology and they throw the... The V8 that they've got in the Z06 in the back, and it's yeah. pumping out 600 horse, and then they throw 400 horse up front, and it's a thousand horsepower yeah, supercar. All silver. That's actually kind of cool. cool. <laughs> I like it. Oh, it's Dude, it rips. Doesn't sound like a hybrid to me. No, that's badass, dude. I like it. I want that job at General Motors. I take back what I said about the look. That looks pretty sick, I I, think. The all, yeah. yeah. It looks good in certain colors, but when it's all one color, it's like the fact that the front lip, the canards, or whatever, like the front um, in front of the radiator is and everything. It's something that all electric cars do, just the whole front, because it doesn't need any air intake, so it's just all blue. Oh, true, yeah. And it it always is what makes them look not just right. Yeah, because it takes in from the back and a little bit in the front, too, but... Dude, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Also, have you guys seen like the SUV mock-up version of the Corvette? I don't know. It, obviously, they're all renderings right now, but it's kind of like the Urus cor- Corvette yeah. thing. Yep. That's pretty cool too. I mean, it makes sense. Like all these different manufacturers are probably seeing like the success that the SUV market is having. Well, don't and, pick the ugliest one. Okay, uh, that, that oh, looks pretty. That, that one. Oh, that's oh, that's yeah, crazy. Yeah. Obviously, it's just a rendering, but okay. that's sick. Like that's. That's oh. a Mike type of car. He'd Mike. Mike would get that. I love that. Mike, Imagine if that's actually what Ken. it looked like with yeah. the door, with like, the big C on the door, like the air vent. I mean, it makes no sense. How are you supposed to put your kid's car seat in the back of that? There's just one back seat, like in the middle. Yeah. I think in the future, though, cars are going to be so aggressive. Give it five years, and that'll probably be what most new cars are looking like for, like sharp edges and and lines and. I don't know. God, I hope so. Pretty aggressive front end. My my two cents on that is I love that 
Chevy's making, you know, a Corvette SUV. I love that uh, Ford made the Mustang SUV, but I wish they wouldn't take the Mustang name and the Corvette name that has like a hundred years of lineage of being a sports car and slap it on an SUV just so it sells. I wish they could come up with a new name. And if it was a fucking Blazer, you know, RS or something like that, they already make that. But, you know, I just don't like that they take the Corvette name and the Mustang name and put it on an electric SUV and go like, great, now it'll sell. I agree. They shouldn't do that. But they did, and they did it to sell. I don't really care that much that they do that as long as it's cool. But, like, when Ford did that with the Mustang Mm -hmm. Mach-E or whatever it was, SUV... How, that just like ruined it. I know. I was <laughs> like, why, so why did they do that? So lame. Hey guys, quick break in the podcast for a word from today's sponsor, Tommy John. It's not weird to give underwear on Valentine's Day, but it is weird to give bad underwear on Valentine's Day. So make the right move and get your partner something from Tommy John. Nobody likes wearing uncomfortable underwear and constantly adjusting down there is not a good look either. From Tommy John's incredibly soft, breathable underwear to playful Valentine's Day pajamas and limited editions, 98% of men and women love Valentine's gifts from Tommy John. And thanks to dozens of comfort innovations and the soft tri-blend and micromodal fabrics with a four-way stretch, Tommy John helps you feel the love all year long. That's why Tommy John doesn't have customers, they have fanatics. And with over 20 million pairs sold, it's easy to see why. Normally getting underwear for a gift is uh, not the best, but when I got a few pair of Tommy Johns this year for Christmas, I was stoked and there's no better gift to give someone than something that only you will see this Valentine's Day. Plus there's no risk because every gift is backed by Tommy John's best pair you'll ever wear or it's free guarantee. Get 20% off your first purchase at tommyjohn.com slash wide open right now for Valentine's Day. Hurry to tommyjohn.com slash wide open for 20% off tommyjohn.com slash wide open. See site for details. Quick and inexpensive shipping is one of the most important things I look for when online shopping. So if you have an e-commerce website or are thinking about starting one, listen up because ShipStation is for you. When you use ShipStation, you can lower shipping costs, make returns easy, and keep your customers happy. And with all the time you save from automating your shipping tasks, you can keep your business growing all year long. Ben, would you like to say anything about ShipStation? I don't really know how to read, but we'll see how this goes. When we first started selling clothes from SeaboysTV.com, setting up the fulfillment was a doubting thing. Daunting task. Told you. (laughs) We didn't want to spend any extra money on something we didn't need. But when we found ShipStation and used their free trial and haven't looked back, we couldn't we couldn't do our fulfillment without it. It's true actually. I set the first first website up, set up ShipStation, and I accidentally put uh the our address as the username, and it's still that to this day. So our username on ShipStation is our address. (laughs) Really? Yeah. I so I see. I mean, I'm, I may have written it down, but it was from the heart. So ShipStation makes it easy to grow your business by handling your orders from every marketplace in one dashboard. ShipStation effortlessly integrates everywhere you sell online, including Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and more. Manage every order from one simple dashboard, automate routine shipping tasks, print shipping labels, and easily compare rates and delivery times to optimize every shipment and automate delivery notifications. And with the best discounts in the industry, you'll never worry about overpaying for shipping. Get up to 84% off USPS and UPS rates. And if that's not enough, use our promo code to try ShipStation free for two months. So keep growing your business all year long with ShipStation and use promo code wide open today at ShipStation.com to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, promo code wide open. I got a call yesterday from someone wanting me to donate to the state troopers of Minnesota. Really? And, and like it, oh, was, I got, it was I got you got a call state too. State troopers? Yeah. Or just no, just like the police force. I didn't get that one. I got state troopers in particular. Mm. And if you want to donate like we it goes straight to them blah 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 and to the troopers? Yeah, it's straight to the troopers. So it's like to the uh you know, but Minnesota State Troopers Association whatever like it goes to the troopers and I was like I just wanted to be like do you know who you're calling? Not, <laughs> you know, not do like you I'm know some, who I am. Yeah, not like I'm like, some felon or, or anything. I'm like, like, wh- do you really? I pay enough to them. <laughs> you're asking? Yeah, I wanted to give her the whole spiel. And then she's like, yep, if you make a donation, you'll get a sticker for the back of your car. That'd be pretty badass. So then I'm like, how much? <laughs> and she's like, well, if for a normal donation, we ask 35 and for the sticker, it's 50. I'll do Did it. Send the paper. Yeah, send the paper. I want this. <laughs> oh, like, 50 bucks for the sticker? Yep. And she was just like, oh, thank you so much. I wish you the best year. And I really appreciate it. Yeah. And I was kind of like, 
I was going to be like, you should call the rest of these guys. But <laughs> hey, I, here's I, some numbers. Right on the numbers. These guys all donate, Wait, too. What? It just so seems like, like such a donation a, going I, I to. Got, that's what she made it very clear, like, like it just three times. The, yeah, she's like, homies? and this, this no. isn't, we're not a middleman. We're just in charge of setting up this donation thing, and it all goes to the state troopers. And I'm just like, actually, I'm like, what actually do they need my money for on top of the money that they've gotten from me and us? But for, I wanted the sticker. That's interesting. I've never heard of like government. I hadn't either. Are you sure, this isn't just Cross hold up, scam? hold up. His name wasn't like Juan, and he didn't request the money via Venmo, did he? What was this uh, this thing called? Mike's on a list. Uh, <laughs> Mike's on a list. Are like, listen, Suckers. you just call him. State you need the, the money. State Patrol Trooper Association. Venmo. STPA. I have no idea. Is that a thing? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> like a scam. Like a scam thing. Or a real thing? No, it looks real. Oh, okay. nice. I just wanted the sticker. Yeah, no, put it on the no, back that's going to be awesome. Mike, is there any update on on your Sauron? No, they, they the shipping company keeps sending me more emails. They like sent me another one just the other day, and they were like, hey, still waiting on that payment for the clear the customs. And then I was like, I was really stern. I was just like, I'm not paying for those. I need to see one at my door. I paid for the one. Send it and we'll talk. Like, you know, I just need to know this is legit. And they're probably going to be like, yeah, it's legit. And I'm like, I don't know who, you know, like I've never is, yeah. bought something before from this vendor. I got to know if it's legit. And I haven't heard anything since, but. Well, after the podcast, Ken did a little bit of digging and he found that the tracking number that they sent was via air, right? The the tracking number Micah gave me um, went to a bunch of different airports. And those Surons have lithium batteries, and they typically would not ship 10 of those via air. Right. It, especially if they told you it was going via sea. I don't know what they told me. They just said it would be <laughs> way back when I made the order. They just said it'll be at my doorstop in 12 days. I did see one comment, though. Most of the comments were like, Mike, you got scammed, you got scammed, you got scammed. But there was one comment that said, I have ordered something from Alibaba, and they said the same thing to me when it got to the port. Hmm. I had to pay the Multiple. shipping for like 10 different things. I can't remember what it was, but it was something similar. And he was like, I took the chance. I paid it, and they showed up at my doorstep. So Damn. Wow. I hate to tell you this, yeah. Mike, to do it, but it might work. That's wild. So I don't know. I, I, don't, I, I, don't, I was just curious. In limbo, I was yeah. just curious uh, what the update was. We're chilling. We'll see how that goes. People, Stay tuned. The, the, my Venmo has definitely been popping. What, really? Both for, yeah, but now it's, no one's paying me 500 but both for $5, $15. Some people are requesting. Some guy requests me for like 20 bucks and says, seeing if, the, heard this on the podcast, seeing if it works. I'm like, seeing if what works? Did, <laughs> did someone on the podcast say, yeah, if you request Micah money on Venmo, he'll pay it You back. might, you might. Like, it has happened. Guys, Evan's looking at the podcast and he looks like he wants some camera time. He, and you, look, and said, and and you look like you're like about he to fall asleep. So I'm going I'm I'm to like, swap out with him here. I, I do have to warn you, Evan has been letting it rip. Oh, that's fine. I'm well, far enough away from him. You guys. Welcome, Ev. Come on in. Welcome, Ev. Take a seat. Welcome, Ev. What's going on? Want to put the seat up? Yeah, you can put your chair up a little bit. It's always at an awkward angle. I feel like the chair is going to break. This is the first time <laughs> Evan sat down on the podcast no and have broken his chair instantly. All right, Ev. We got you something. My God. <laughs> you got me this glass from the kitchen? Oh, nice. Your favorite. A nice, expensive white wine. A nice old bottle of Josh. You got a boot full of wine. Let me taste that. Oh, my gosh. You know, this was a very nice surprise, Ben. Why can't all your surprises be like this? <laughs> cheers. 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 Ben cheers is it for me with Evan. And we found that white wine does wild things to Evan. Talked about it a little bit on the last pod. I didn't want to do you too dirty, though. Now, what everything that was going down the night, but Evan was getting loose on white wine. I don't really remember, so I don't even think it happened. <laughs> That's how that works, right? I think something like that. Dude, Ev, sit down with the heated jacket. Like, is it that cold in here? Dude, I really like this heated jacket. <laughs> I don't want to take it off. Dude, literally. So, like, David sends us five and I just got heated jackets, and David sent three of them, and I took one, Evan took one, and Ryan took one. Here was my number one goal going into it, being one of one of the half of the crew that got a heated jacket. I'm not going to say anything about it. Nothing. I like it. If someone asks, yeah, yeah, I love it. It's warm. 
Oops. Hope you get one. Have just and Evan really, you guys are like, oh yeah, like this heated jacket. But it's not even just you two. I'm like wondering if it's like one of those things, you know, like dudes who drink IPAs who can't like not tell people that they drink IPAs and mm. to drink IPAs or like people or crossfitters guys yep, who cross vegan uh people with fucking tents on the top of their forerunner like they can't <laughs> they cannot tell people i think he did it's kind of part of it obviously um people notice the flashing or the light on your jacket or your gloves but I, it's one of those things oh yeah i have heated gloves you don't have heated gloves oh they're Dude, great level up in my hands don't get cold cuz they're they heated they don't. And it's just, I don't know, it's just thought it was one of those things It's going to be something you can't not tell people. I do feel like you guys are flexing on me. I got the same jacket just without the heater. And it's just, you just feel inferior. <laughs> yes, kind of. You, you must. When I, the whole crew pulls up and they all got the blinking little red dot, <laughs> it's like, whoa. All right. These guys mean business. Yeah, kind of just looking, they must be warm. <laughs> So what? so, where were you going with that? You wanna you wanna stop people from talking yeah, about oh it? Oh yeah, or? I guess yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, not necessarily stop them, but I think that it's gonna turn into that. Like, there's Which more and more heated units. Yeah, you just gotta humbly be warm in your heated <laughs> jackets and gloves and hats. Without saying something about it, it's impossible. I can't yeah. do it. <laughs> no, to not you can't say any. You no, can't, every time cannot. I turn it on and it feels so nice and warm. I, I have to tell someone. This is a, a compulsive thing. It's so amazing. It's like taking that big drink off a crispy dew and just going, ah. Oh. It's like throwing the jacket on and getting the warmth. Just like, yeah, it's oh, like a yes. warm hug. Yeah, it's beautiful. So last night I was scrolling TikTok, as I frequently do at late hours of the evening. And I came across a video of a woman <laughs> with a fenced-in yard and just a, a pretty normal-looking house, but it, it looked familiar to me. And she is screaming at these people who are videotaping her. I'm like, what in the hell is going on? Is this like a case of bad neighbors? Because around here, we live in an area where people don't really put up fences. Like fences are considered neighbor haters. And it's like this weird thing because you're just like, yeah, we're, you know, you got enough space. And I'm like, man, why does this lady have a large fence and a gated driveway, all this stuff? I figured out that she lives in the old Breaking Bad house. Oh my gosh. And so I no. feel like any house of a TV show or, you know, whatever is, is, is common for people to visit it. Yeah. Apparently the Breaking Bad house is very common. And in the show, I believe they threw a pizza on the roof. So people would go to her house <laughs> multiple times and throw a pizza up on the roof as a funny prank. Well, lady lived there and was obviously pretty pissed about pizzas being thrown on a roof. And it has seemed that basically her full-time job is sitting in her front yard and screaming at people the instant that they get out of their car. Hearing that immediately, I'm like, you should not buy a house that has been in a show unless exactly. you're prepared or want the clout involved with it. The, the repercussions but, of like, it. Dude, that sounds like a win. You get free kinda, pizza. Oh. <laughs> yeah, off the roof. Evan's sitting up on his <laughs> roof, workaholic style, just catching the free pizza. Yeah, yeah. on the roof with a pizzazz and a lawn yeah. chair. It's so funny, Ryan, because I was just thinking about what it would be like to own the Fast and Furious house. Oh, I mean, you know, oh, like the legendary dude. Fast and Furious house. Mm -hmm. People always pulling up at odd hours with loud cars, yeah. most likely. <laughs> Taking pictures of it and everything. But do you think somebody like owns that house? Or is that like part of whatever? Is I, that Disney that owns Fran uh, Fast and Furious? Who, who? I doubt it. I've seen stuff with it where they have signs in the yard that say like no photos and stuff like that. But you'd think someone who's smart would be like, all right, you want to take a picture of your car in the driveway? Ten bucks. Yeah. Or, or open it up as like a museum or, yeah. or, some, well, that's or what, something like that's that. That's what intrigued me is like what, what decides uh, whether it's going to be a, let's call it a museum, a, how, a show house or a house that just goes on the market. They should just all be museums. You know what else is a legendary house is the one from Home Alone. I think that, yeah, that is actually a tourist attraction. Home Alone and then Full House in San Diego, too. Oh, mm. yeah. 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 That one's like, you can't buy that. Hmm. All right, Ken, play some videos. I wonder if she drives a Pontiac Aztec. Oh, you stupid little twig. <laughs> is that enough? Get the fuck out. I will call the cops. You're harassing me. Get out. Now she's just the meme. Like they yeah. don't even go to the house. To yeah, see they're the going. House. They go to see this lady who's going to scream at them. <laughs> That's what I mean. So true. They uh, were. They we went go. there Here. and they were I bummed that she wasn't there. Yeah. Oh, God. Hi. Hey there. Hey. Hey. You have a big. I like it. 
I think it's stylish. What are you gonna talk about? Halloween's over. <laughs> this lady oh, just hates uh, life. I kind of like her vibe, actually. Like him, so go away. I just want to say, hope you're having a good day. Okay, hey, this is our first time in Albuquerque. Oh, I'm so glad for you. Do you have any <laughs> welcome messages? No, you can keep going. Okay. It's hard on this, but if you could quickly scroll through TikTok, it's just a bunch of videos of her sitting in that exact chair, screaming at passerby or anybody that stops there. And one of them, the guy didn't even get out of his car. He's like, nope, nope, keep going, keep going. I hate to say it, but now she's just doing it to herself. Like, that's now, what I mean. Now it becomes a thing. Yo, you got to go there to go mess with her. Yeah. Man, that's kind of funny, actually. Like, she's putting in shifts. Yeah, in the, the driveway, front yard. Dude. Where is this? Albuquerque, Albuquerque New, New Mexico. Mexico. Should we swing through there on the road trip? Do we have anybody that lives in Albuquerque, New Mexico, so and can send us a hello from her? Toss a pizza up there. Can somebody that lives there actually go there and take a, be so take a video? Funny. Are we telling someone to trespass right now? No, no you don't know. No, 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 stay on the, road. on the road. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. Dude, I don't think you could trespass. I don't yeah. think you could get and over I, that fence without like a little was, ladder. What? what, what I'm are you? not very tall. I could jump that fence. It no, like it's four chance. Feet tall. No, go back. Hold, pull, <laughs> no, pull that back up. There's no chance. Ev. It has spikes on the top. They you don't, don't want to catch a spikes. sack. You just got to be careful. Throw your sweatshirt over the spikes. And you, you'll end up like that deer that got its nuts. Can they jump enough spike fence? But look at her. She's got a couple chairs in the front Bro, yard set hold up. up there. She's got another fence to her Ins? door. Oh, look at that. Oh, my Dang. gosh. Man, she's got this thing locked up like Fort Knox. Well, I do feel a bit bad then if, like, it's become that much of an issue. Bro, she must love that house. I know. I'd be like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. She's well, probably tried to sell it. That's what I was going to say. How do you think it affects the price? Is it worth way less? Is it worth more? Like, how did she end up I don't know. It's one in of those, that house? Yeah, yeah, it's like one of those novelty things. Or maybe she. I saw a really funny one. She goes, the show ended the show ended eight years ago. Give it up. <laughs> oh, what she doesn't realize, and this isn't my opinion, but there's kind of a meme. She doesn't realize it's the best show ever made. Mm-hmm. It's like a lot a lot so? of no, that again, not my opinion, but a lot of people are like Breaking Bad is like the, the pinnacle of I really like the show, but I'm really laughing at the fact that this house has a new roof. It, you know, it has a, a steel roof. It's not it's not shingles anymore. So the pizzas would slide <laughs> so off. So the pizzas slide off. <laughs> oh, did yeah. you do that? Hook a pizza. <laughs> yeah, did you do that after the pizza debacle or what? When we flew into uh, Jackson Hole when we went snowmobiling a couple weeks ago, the people who wrote Yellowstone nailed it. I literally looked around and I thought I was in the show. Because there's people walking around. First of all, you get off the plane, and it's amazing, the mountains and the nice airport, nicest airport I've ever been in. Free mimosas. You walk in, you you walk in, and in the baggage claim, there's free mimosas. That's crazy. Well, not even at a bar. No. At the baggage claim. They're just just on a little stand, like a lemonade stand, but for free mimosas. Unbelievable. That was the best way to put it. It It was a lemonade stand for free mimosas. It was the crazy. No, they didn't check a single ID. No. That's all. Yeah. It was it was wild. Dude, there was this guy on the plane who looked exactly like the one guy that tried to shut him down, the first big businessman. I'll pop up his picture here. But he's got this flowing hair. He's wearing like a a Montclair or whatever that brand is. Really fancy skiing brand. I don't even fucking know. Puffer jacket, like kind of uh, adventure pants. And he's walking around. Is that the one the that plane. had the cowboy hat? Too? Yeah. And he yeah. walks out of first class and he's throwing his hair back. First of all, it took a shit like nine times. I don't even. I, there was something going on with him for sure. But I was keeping an eye on this guy. I was right in front of the bathroom. And I was like, dude, what is this guy doing? But every time he'd walk up, he'd pick a new person. He'd be like, what you doing? Hey, first time in Jackson. Like he was going back home to his freaking ski mansion. And I was like, man, no wonder people that live out here hate these people. They were so, so hateable. There was a guy wearing yeah. a shawl. Well, yeah, like a, like a poncho, but like a little bit more Western-y. And so, he was just wearing it in the airport. I'm like, dude, you flew Delta first class <laughs> to Jackson Hole. You're going to go skiing. Why, why do you look like you just are traversing the Oregon Trail? Well, on a horse. Yeah. On a horse, yeah. When, when me and Ryan got there, they lost our baggage. So we're like going up and we're dealing with the people at Delta. And and uh, as we're standing there, there was a lady next to us um, that was also dealing with lost baggage from our flight. And the guy was like standing there. And you could tell he was getting a little hotter and hotter because then he started raising his voice. And then that's when me and Ryan started watching what was going on. The guy goes, huh! Ah! I have no clothes to wear, and I'm here for five days. And the lady's like, I don't know what to tell you. And he goes, I'm from L.A. 
I don't have clothes for this anyways. And the lady's like, well, what? what's the problem then? And he's like, don't raise your voice at me. She's like, yeah. don't raise your voice at me. They're, they're trying me to and calm them like, down. What the fuck is going on? Like these two are just yelling at each other right now. This guy just. Kept bringing up that he was from California. It was the weirdest shit ever. It was like, and dude, then not I was a like, flex right now. Yeah, not a flex. And I was like, man, this is why all these Californians moving here just get such a bad rep is because obviously there's probably people that hate California and then there's people that are in love with California but want to move out of California but bring all their politics and problems to the mountain towns. But it was interesting. We were talking to Blaine, who was one of the, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I th- for some reason, I thought you were CJ first. <laughs> I blacked out there. I looked over like you weren't with on the trip. You know, Blaine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Blaine and Jay. You know, Blaine. No, but Blaine is like a full-on cowboy rancher. And he was like, yeah, dude, like, it's pretty much exactly how it is in the show is like all these ranch hands, you know, like we're all kind of we're real rough cow- around the we're edges, r- real cowboys. Right. So then when we go into towns, especially Jackson, he's like. All these pretend cowboys, like, will be pretend cowboys, and real cowboys do not fuck with that one bit. And he was like, yeah, pretty much every time we go out, we get into bar fights and everything like that. And I was like, damn, that's pretty cool to hear. Like, it's Dude, pretty cool wow. to hear that that's, like, actually how it is. I would not wear a cowboy hat in Jackson. No. Be, I would not. I no, feel like it'd just be insulting. Shit. I wouldn't wear like, a cowboy hat anywhere. Wait, well, okay, true. And I, I don't wear it. I effed up then. I did that. Did you? Remember when I wore... It tucked in jeans and my cowboy boots. I remember. A, a big ass American flag button up and then a cowboy hat and then handlebars. Oh, when out you, downtown yeah, Jackson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I seem to fit in pretty well with that whole look, but maybe Jackson is almost more phony cowboys. It was like the outskirts. Oh, for sure. That could outskirts, be, yeah. like. Uh, I like Driggs Af- and Afton, 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 the places yeah. that we've Those, went. Yeah. New year, new adventures, from new travel experiences to new jobs or picking up new skills. There's no better way to prepare for 2023 than by learning a new language with Babbel. Babbel is the language learning app that sold over 10 million subscriptions. And thanks to Babbel's addictively fun and easy bite-sized language lessons, you can feel confident no matter where the new year takes you. Before Babbel, the last Spanish lesson I took was freshman year in high school, and I really hated that, but I did want to learn how to speak Spanish when I'm traveling. These lessons don't feel like school, and you only need 10 minutes to complete a lesson, and I'm already feeling more confident for my trip to Mexico. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over 150 language experts and voiced by real native speakers, not computers. Babbel has over 14 different languages to choose from, and Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you improve your pronunciation and accent. There's so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can have podcasts, games, video stories, and even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. So right now, get up to 55% off your subscription when you go to Babbel dot com slash wide open that's babble.com slash wide open for up to 55 percent off your subscription babble language for life but you saying that about blaine like so shout out anthony and creed they hooked us up with some airbags and like the sled that we tried to use to take the r6 out they lived in driggs idaho and he you know he dudes like mullet what hat you know the the classic short sleeve button up like he he looked like you know he grew up there and he's like i grew up in jackson actually and got pushed out like firsthand stories like you know he's like i grew up there like tell us i can't remember what he said let's say 15 and then we had to move it was too expensive i'm like ah that sucks you know he didn't move super far away but like just getting pushed out of the town that you grew up in just because yeah because of rich people but so that was pretty interesting to hear we were talking about this when we were going through uh wyoming and we were like why why do you think all these people are coming from the big cities and like moving into these small little Wyoming or Western towns. I think it is because it's, it's so different, you know, Mm -hmm. it's like, it's so just almost like freeing and like open. And if I guess you are from like a big city and you're looking to escape that, like that's like the polar opposite. Yeah. Seriously. It's, it's, it's it's cool. So I get the draw of it, but totally. obviously the people that are there are like, no, stay no, out. stay this away. Is, That's why we yeah, like this is it why too. We like it too. Everybody can't be there. I mean, we live in like a pretty rural area. I mean, you can see stars from our house, and there's not fast food restaurants for a while, stuff like that. But I mean, you go out there, and it, if you think about switching from, you know, San Diego, and then now all of a sudden you're living in. Afton, Wyoming, it literally could not be more polar opposite, but I totally get the draw. Like, 
even for me going out there and not playing cowboy, but playing, you know, living Western life still is amazing to me. I'm like, I love this for the week that we're out there. So I, of course, those people. You ever met somebody from there that wants to move away? Uh, no. Very yeah, rarely never. do people no. grow up there and then leave. And it's crazy how many people we meet from, let's say, just Wisconsin and Minnesota out there. Dude, I think we would be better off getting a ranch out there or getting like land out there than we would in Florida, honestly. I like, think I think, fit I think is we could better. do more stuff out there. The nice thing about Florida is the weather. You get the generic nice day every day but i like the seasons and stuff like that and i think the uh the level up with all the the national lands and then the mountains and having a bunch of acreage dude not much could beat it can't ride snowmobiles in florida well you can (laughs) (laughs) just Just not very far no it'd be cool though maybe one day wait has anyone ever water skipped on the ocean I'm sure. Robbie Madison. Oh, yeah, true. I have thought that. We um, could bring the water sled. Snow the water bike. Skipping. And it was like the sickest thing ever. He surfed away. Yeah. Yo, no. Insane. Insane. Yeah. And then didn't he get like totally like pummel drived into the, or pile drived into the uh, like wave? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe so not. how can he ride one in the ocean, but Evan can't even make it 200 feet across our pond? Well, yeah, how's you, that work? Well, I mean, yeah, Mike's you should snow bike it, is not as nice as Robbie. Poopy. <laughs> you should look at the setup they have, though. It's like it's the weirdest thing. It's like a ski where the, the front is all basically a ski watercraft. Well, it still has thing, a tire, though. But then the back has a ski, but the tire sticks through and it's a dune tire and it paddles the, the water. And it's like the weirdest thing. It's, it's so one he of didn't a kind. Do a timber that was not a, a snow bike or anything. No track, no nothing. Oh, interesting. Dune, yeah, super weird. Dude, he literally like pitted a wave though. Hang loose, bro. I don't think I've I've never seen anybody snowmobile skip in the ocean though. Who said? Yeah, whoever said that. Yeah, now that I think about yeah, it, I don't, I don't think that. Obviously, we're like one Google away from finding out if someone has. Can look it but up. But like, has what about someone, like in Alaska? Like, that'd be pretty there's sick. like snow and oh, an ocean. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Probably I'm in Alaska. Sure like someone's Florida. done it, but probably not anybody who's popularized. But I'm it. picturing like so you know as you guys might know, CJ is the Water, water skip, skip guy, thing. like he's the best at riding that water skip sled we have. And so we're like in Florida, and we're like, the waves are a little gnarly today, and they're like this tall. Do you think you could just, <laughs> you know, just stay them. on it? And Can you imagine taking <laughs> off the beach at a fifteen foot wave and just? Dude, I was thinking like four foot, and you'd probably sink her and. Well, you wad, bro, but, launch. Well, I guess like yeah, you'd want to go. Wave. If the you bigger, just the charged a surfing wave on a snowmobile, just be yeah. amazing. I feel like if Whistling Diesel can take his Duramax truck in the ocean we can take a snowmobile snowmobile. think about recovering a snowmobile from an ocean in a lake like maybe you have the pontoon set up or you drag it to shore or whatever just the the ocean ocean gets deep fast but it it, really doesn't that's a crazy uh, thing it depends but like even the waves like if we got to link up with jet ski ryan and make this happen dude i feel like hitting a wave a curling ocean wave would be like the same as hitting a drift Maybe but if we, you could come up it and like turn out on it and then come back sick. in, maybe we should start with Ryan landing a jet ski backflip in the ocean and, then, gonna and then focus on CJ yeah, backflipping a water skipping sled. If it's if Ryan lands again. the backflip on the jet ski, CJ has to go for a backflip on the snowmobile. Dude, I honestly I think this is a great idea. We got we got a link I with jet ski Ryan. Say I water skipped a snowmobile on the ocean. Let's send it down with Randy next time he goes. He's got a sled deck with a stand up jet ski and a. No be on it. Back. No, what's this guy I'm doing? Right, you don't think you could backflip a, a stand-up jet ski? What Dude, if it was like a backflip jet ski? It's so tough because in 2021 when I started, I was like, I can <laughs> backflip my jet ski. And then it took a whole year and I didn't. And then I was like, I'm coming back with a vengeance in 2022. I'm going to flip my I backflip backfl- jet, ski. My jet ski. And then I didn't. And then now I've kind of lost. I don't feel like it's a third times a charm type of deal, you know? I don't you know, won't man. know until you find out. I don't know. I wouldn't give up so soon. <laughs> Two years. <laughs> don't give up so soon, man. Dude, we were just talking about uh, the other day at the bar. We were we were laughing about how much, like, when someone gets stuck in a snowmobile, I'll, let's say they're, like, they're at the bar, you're all there, everyone's drinking, and he's like, all right, I'm going to head home. And then he gets stuck in a snowmobile. Everyone inside the bar rushes out to help him. Not maybe everyone, but... 
because they don't want to see him get picked up by anyone. Or they, it's a fallen soldier. Yeah. Like no man left behind. Yeah. You help him. Exactly. And I, we were just cracking up about that. Like how they all like go and help him because they don't want to see him like anyone get, get picked trouble. up. And, and you know, that, that shit happens around here. And then uh, just transitioning into me seeing someone back. They, they're just taking the road next to recycling bins close to here. And they just back up into the ditch. I'm just driving by. I'm like, what the In hell? In the car? What was that? Yeah. Me and Sydney were just driving by. I go, what? Did, did you see that? That person just backed into the ditch? I don't know. And next thing you know, we're turning around. We're going to check on her. She's just wasted. Oh. <sighs> but keep in mind. It was a Sunday, New Year's Day at like noon, and she Whoa. is just wasted. The mimosas. Whoa. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Get you. And then it just got even funnier. He's like, well, oh, you sit tight there. And she's barely in the ditch, just stuck. And she's like, <laughs> and uh, I go get ropes, come back, then really get to talking to her. That's kind of when I knew. I was like, man, she she's is. just messed up right now. And uh, she's like, She's got her name tag on. She's like, I just got done with my shift at, I won't even say it. I don't want to like, I don't need, I could. Probably don't say it. Yeah. Probably yeah. Don't. She's like, I just got done with my, but basically she works at a store, not a bar, a store. Oh. Anyway. She, so then I'm just like, okay, it was New Year's Day. Like, uh, you know, she, it could have gotten crazy. And then that next day she, maybe you just woke up drunk and, but no, it was just like, I just got done with my shift. I'm like, what are you doing? Just Come on. Her. So then shift it's like, bender. Yeah, then it's tough because it's like, so I guess more of the story is like, what do you do in a situation like that where I, I start to pull her out? Like, we kind of hinted at, should, we can drive your car home for you. And she's like, oh, I'm just over, just just down. I decided to take a different way home. I'm like, there's two ways to get home. By the Cormorant store or this road. <laughs> You just took a different, like, you never took this? No, you backed in, like, and it's like, how much do you push someone to, like, try to drive them home safely or just be like, it's out of my hands? Did you, what'd you do? We just let her go. Oh, jeez. Yeah. I feel like Are, you, I feel like you gotta be persistent on that. Like, yeah. something that's, like that's, a random stranger, that's though, I mean. there's only so much you can do. Your buddy, uh, yeah, be true. persistent. That, that's don't, true. don't let yeah. your buddy do something dumb. I, was, I guess that's what I was really, like, it, that stressed me out. I'm like, what do you do? Do you really like be like, no, you need to get out. We're going to drive this for you. Like to a random co- that, person. Yeah, that, that's like a tough, tough moral dilemma. And I guess it is one thing if you did try and you were persistent about it or just like pulling her out and just be like, all right. See ya. See ya. Yeah. I, I feel <laughs> then, like then you're probably in the wrong. But I guess if you're like trying. Toss her a twisted T. That's tough. <laughs> yeah. Have a good one. <laughs> Have a good one. I feel like that's a tough thing that a lot of people do that I see. They're like, oh, well, I don't want to, I don't want to drive after drinking. So I'm going to just ride my snowmobile or I'm going to take the razor. Or I'm going to do something like that. And that's something I really hate to see because I mean, yes, in a car, you're a danger to yourself and others, but on the snowmobile, it is so, you are so exposed and it is such a fast vehicle that is so easy to overdrive. I overdrive a snowmobile every time I ride it of my talents. And it's like, all you need is to be just getting done telling snowmobile stories at the bar and be like, I'm going to absolutely rip home. Mm -hmm. And, and then you end up not getting to ride the next time. And like, I just think that that is such like a loose thing that people don't realize the consequences of how fast things can change like that when you're riding sled. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I didn't mean to start preaching, but don't, don't drive your snowmobile drunk. Please be safe. We love you all. Nowadays, snowmobiles are really fast and shit can go wrong real quick. And the old ones make you feel comfortable. Even, even though you're only going 40, you're like, this thing's easy. And then before like you know, a couch, boom. but yeah, yeah, it's like riding a couch. I guess it, maybe it's just around here. Or maybe it's just the fact that, we don't ride snowmobiles like on the weekend or something like that. But yeah, I've never really got the gist of like bar hopping on a snowmobile. Hey, you got any wine left back there? I wish. Evan needs a refill. <laughs> Ryan, I owe you an apology. <laughs> Ev, <laughs> Ev, the robot other, dick strikes. Maybe dude, Evan owes thought, an apology. Dude, every other, <laughs> every other sentence out of Evan's mouth is just smoke coming out because he'll take a rip and then he'll answer whatever i asked him <laughs> smoke 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 dude that's because you stress me out <laughs> <laughs> like oh god ben's coming over i gotta chill out here <laughs> so i mean i today i realized this it was so funny so evan's dad uh like smoked stogies like 
pretty like big cigars, you know, there's varying levels to it, but just big cigars, loves fishing, big cigars. And you have <laughs> this football, Vikings football looking vape. Screw the Vikings, but oh, yeah, continue. Absolutely. And a lot of people, you know, they vape like or whatever. And then when Evan does it, he throws it in his mouth and just chills with it in there and then grabs it like this. <laughs> and I was like, oh, his dad's showing here, but it's just the times have changed. That's all. Every time Ev takes a rip of that, he's thinking about the Minnesota Vikings <laughs> putting that vape in his mouth. Uh, that, that's actually where I was going, Ryan. I, I owe you an apology. Okay. You were right about the Vikes. You were so right, dude. At the beginning of the season, they were hot. We were like, this is the year. And Ryan was like, they're going to get everyone's hopes up. They're going to make you think that they're killing it. And then they're going to disappoint us. They've they're only done it a hundred times in the <laughs> yeah. past. <laughs> you were right, Ryan. I was trying to be positive. I was, I was just, quite frankly, I was being delusional. And you're being a realist. And, and you I'm were sorry. right. I'm sorry no. that I was right. I wish I wasn't. <laughs> yeah. For the whole state like, of Minnesota, sorry for? dude. I with, wish I wasn't right. With Ryan, that you- being said, though, Ryan has lost more than any of us combined on the Vikes. He bet $500 on the last Vikings game. I I didn't listen to my own words. I was a little I confused just, by I that. I think it was something about, like, you kind of would get on me about, you know, like, oh, Ryan hates the Vikes. And you do it, and I, I wouldn't have any ground to stand on. <laughs> you believed it. He started yeah, to believe it. Started so, to it. Damn, maybe I do hate the Vikes. No, I just would be like, ah, oh, man, I don't have any ground to stand on. And I was like, oh, I own a jersey. I watch the games. I like them. You know, what do you say? So, playoffs come up. We're playing the Giants. They're the wild card. There's no way we can lose to them. Right, yeah. We've had such a good season. <laughs> yeah. We should win. So I'm like, yeah. Wade, our lovely UPS driver who's going to Vegas, he, he you know, kind of is like, guys, let's put in a bet. Let's put in a bet. And I go, yeah, Wade, let's do it. 500 bucks on the Vikes. All they got to do is win. That can't be that hard. Sounds easy enough. <sighs> 500 bucks gone. Lost it. Yeah, I was actually, I was going to also put in some money and bet on the bikes. And then Ryan and, like, and no, CJ, no. they wouldn't let me because every anything I touch turns to shit. Yes, he's a, <laughs> a notoriously bad investor. A bad investor. Will crash the entire market. Bad gambler and bad better. And so I went to give them, Wade, the money. And they were like, no, no, don't take the money, Wade. Take the, don't take the money. And I was like, well, what if I... What if I put it on the Giants? And then if the Vikes win, I'm going to be happy. And if the Giants win, I make money. And they were like, just keep your money out of this. Oh, just so stay did. away from just stay away from the deal. Looking back at it, I think if I would have put money on the Giants, the Vikes would have won. Mm-hmm. Thanks a lot, yeah. man. <laughs> Thanks yeah. a lot, man. <laughs> I, actually kind of so I messed up there, guys. I'm sorry. I could have uh, I could have made a difference. <laughs> But uh, instead I of Kirk throwing and, it five yards, he would have thrown it nine. Yeah, he would have. He would have. And this one's on me, guys. So I'm. I'm sorry. I let everyone in Minnesota down. Uh, I'm gonna use the off season to obviously work on it and come back stronger next year. Yeah. I'll and, put money uh, on the other teams. And if you notice any new large structures coming up in Vegas, CJ and I have funded them. Yeah, your guys is seven hundred bucks is gonna go far. Absolutely. Yeah. For sure. We'll put it in a parking spot. All or this Vegas and gambling talk. Get you revved up, Evan? Yeah, I've really got a hankering for some roulette right now. Oh goodness! Really? Man. I would love to play some roulette, dude. I'm feeling lucky. <laughs> yeah. I think I could. I think I could get rich tonight. Should we, we go to Vegas? Oh, I was gonna say Manoman. They don't have oh. roulette in Minnesota. Really? What? Dude, yeah. last night we were we were throwing dice on the the pool table like we sometimes do. <laughs> And I always get suckered in, like, you know, it's five bucks here and there. But I come in, I'm just like, yeah, yeah, five bucks. And then you guys are like 20, and I go, ah, oh, 20, 20, yeah, 20. Mike's and like, so, dude, I've already lost three grand this week yeah. on a Suron that I'm not <laughs> So we're putting it in the five bucks game, like, and lose those, whatever. And then Evan goes, last game, 20 bucks? Sure. We all put 20 bucks in. There's a group of, like, seven of us or whatever it was. Eight. Eight of us. And then... We all, one tie, all tie. So if two people tie, everyone ties. We put in more, 20 more. Then happens again, put in 20 more. The pot's at like 420. Oh my gosh. 400 bucks? Three times. Yeah. And it was over 400 and I'm like, 
I win. And I'm like, amazing. And I just don't even know how to take it. I was like, it seems too easy. So I, I win, and I'm like, amazed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, yeah, I'm not amazing. I'm just like, this is amazing. And it, it just doesn't even seem fair. I'm like, I just kind of, like, walked into this game, threw some money down, and, like, next thing I know, I walk away with pretty much all the money in everyone's wallet. Well, how about when you gave everyone money back? Then that's, I was like, then I just, I don't know why I'm built like this, but I give everyone five, mostly to be funny, but I'm like, such a five bucks, five bucks, five bucks. Just get, like tipping the, yeah, like yeah. Almost like dealer. tipping out. That's what it felt like. And then Evan just goes, another game, <laughs> 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 another game for five bucks. Dude, it was so, and I'm like, cause I just couldn't believe it. Even though, why was I surprised? We all play another game for five bucks, and then I win that one. I'm like, <laughs> Sorry, well, guys. Did you take the money and walk then? <laughs> I mean, Good. I just lost like $100. a hundred dollars. What's this five dollars? Like, might as well just yeah. gamble that too. That was a good time, though. That's you know? the mindset, Ev. I think if anybody's ever thinking about going to the casino, you know, it's it's a risky maneuver. <laughs> just <laughs> yeah, don't do it. Yeah, just don't do it. You could even end the sentence there. Yeah, <laughs> no, nothing further needs to be said, but. We went to the arcade this oh, past weekend. Arcades are fun. Yeah. An arcade it's is just gambling. a casino with less money and more fun. And four kids. Four ki- yeah. But, well, same, I mean, same but if you take the four kids out of it, it's it just makes a casino it, little, it, makes it a little weird. We were definitely the oldest people running around. No, uh, to be honest, no, we weren't. Yeah, there was a couple. It was when we well, first yeah, they watched, were older, no, but they yeah, were they with had their kids. kids. Uh, yeah, they, yeah, they most kids dude, there. I mean, I saw a few. So we could go in there, and they were like, "Yeah, you can drink in there." Like that's kind of cool. I mean, if you guys have ever been to a Dave and Buster's, yeah, you can drink in there. But I roll in, and it's like all I see is kids, and I'm like, it felt even if weird. I can drink in here, this is weird. I thought it was funny that we were doing like this. Uh, Dry January, trying not to drink. Well, <laughs> I guess I wasn't, but a couple of people in the group were like, "We're we're doing dry January." And then right after we got done golfing, everyone was like, "Should we go downtown?" And I was like, well, "Go downtown to the bars? What do you mean? No, let's let's not do that. That sounds terrible for the people that are sober or like trying to be sober." And then I was like, well, what if we just go to the arcade? We go downstairs, go to the arcade. I swear everyone that was like doing dry January was like, this sucks. I was like, what else do you do when you're sober? I feel like this is just one of those things. Like, <laughs> What else is there to do? I'm a big advocate. <laughs> what else is there to do? Go, you can't go to the arcade. There's nothing. So I, I failed dry January. <laughs> I didn't start until after Idaho. So I started on like the 15th. And then I made it, which was Wednesday. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the 5th or something. Like, I mean, no, it, was I know. it was the 15th. And then I I was like, all right, drive January here on out. And I made it Wednesday, Thursday. And then I drank on Friday. But I don't blame myself. That was a good couple and of days. Couple <laughs> of, your liver thanks you. And my lack of self-control. I blame my surroundings. Mm. Yeah. Your environment. Yeah, they know I, they don't take accountability. No, absolutely not. It's not my fault. Of course. That I broke. If if I had been around better people that didn't take me out to a golfing drinking establishment and then take me to a, a drinking games environment and then tease me with the carrot of going downtown. Hold up. Ken, are, are you doing dry January? Hey, hey Ryan, I've been, doing, I've been doing dry January since the 7th when I got home from Florida. <laughs> I'm proud of you. And I went to all applause. the same places and I still haven't had a drink since. <laughs> I, I am impressed. It, it is. When, that's, that's I awesome. think it is. How do you feel, Ken? Do you feel good? Extremely bored. <laughs> <laughs> Ken, Ken was one of the people in the arcade. Like, fuck this. <laughs> have it, you, it have you considered? Uh, well, then drugs? I went to the. They had a they had a blackjack table there, and I go play blackjack. I'm like, God, I just need a drink. I just need a beer. Or a vodka Red Bull or something would make it so much more entertaining. Dude, look at the look in his eyes right now. He's talking about alcohol getting all red. Passionate. Up, See, I could quit anytime I wanted to. I just wanted it. I didn't need it. Oh, like well, I, him. All right. That's what I was going to say is that I'm not about like, all right, I need to take two weeks off, mostly because I know I can't do it. But <laughs> <laughs> pause for laugh. Pause for laugh. Amen. But if it happens, you know, Mike, it that happens. Is something I, I, I have always respected about you is the self awareness. The self awareness yeah. is just it's it's a, it's, it's off there. the charts, man. So it's like, I'm so proud of you for that. What it what is the point of calling it Dry January? 
if you started the 15th or you started the 7th, what really, I mean, I, it's easier to explain to people. Oh, why aren't you drinking? Yeah. Dry, dry January. It's easy to explain, hey, but bro, I'm not bro, a, doing, like, doing dry January is exactly like having, having a heated jacket or going to CrossFit. Yeah, you like, you gotta tell like everybody. All these it things. is. You can't do you can't dry January and not without telling everyone you're doing dry January. What That's about accurate? Uh, no, not November. Did that pan out for you guys? Wait, pan out? Who does that? I sure didn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that is one of those things. I'm like legit. Like, who does that? Do well, people still do that? I think the still? same thing about dry January. They're both bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I think I'm. I, I like no shave November. Like, just do with that what you will. It can be your beard. Could you be your whole body? Like, that's fun. That's funny. It changes your look. Doesn't hurt anybody, but. No, not November. That hurts people. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was going to make a joke, but it just didn't feel right. Yeah, it's but fine. Yeah. Big, yeah. <clears throat> did you guys, other than dry January, which we've obviously all failed, did anybody have any other New Year's resolutions that they haven't kept up with? Oh, are, oh already, shit. I forgot to set those. Have already, like, abandoned ship on? Yeah. I legit. Uh, yeah, I actually, I, I told myself I was going to start working out. <laughs> Classic. That That's original. Happened. Wait, I do have a question on that. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever start working out <laughs> this year? <laughs> well, wait. Uh, this year? This year. After you said, <laughs> I'm going to start working out no, this year. No, <laughs> no. I still haven't no, gotten to the gym no, once. I still I, haven't gotten in the gym and once. And I wasn't going to call you all for it, but I, no. I'm, I don't think he has. So, no, yeah. I, I abandoned ship immediately after I told myself that. <laughs> So yeah, that one's not going too well. Where you did, where you went right is not telling everybody. Yeah, I didn't tell. They, if I never told anybody I was doing dry January, there'd be no it fuss. Be there would be no hubbub about me ordering crown yeah, lemonades today at dinner. So if you if you'd been like, oh, I'm going to work out every day, and the first day you're not at the gym, people would have noticed. Dude, I just quit right move, away. Move in silence. Hey, hey quit I before just, you start. Exactly. That's what, what I always what say. Do, no, what do we always say? If you're going to give up, just give up right away. What's the point it's of never, dragging it out? It's also <laughs> never too late to give up. Yeah, you, basically the thing, if you're going to give up, give up now because you're probably going to fail anyway. <laughs> this is such <laughs> awful Can't you see that? Yeah, let you see that. Just a picture, like an inspirational picture, black and white, mm -hmm. and cursive writing. If you're going to give up, just give up right away. <laughs> ben <Same>. Roth. <laughs> just do it give up so my girlfriend alondra who has much uh stronger willpower than me apparently said going into the new year she's like i'm gonna start more consistently working out she wrote it down and was like i'm gonna drink more water i'm gonna start working out i'm gonna do all these things to benefit her life and i'm like you know what i will do that including dry january and i was like i will do that to support you you know i'm, I'm with you on this Week goes by and I go, babe, I just came back from the snowmobiling trip. The time changes. I'm so tired. Not this week. I can't work out this week. Too busy with work. I'll get you next week. It's Wednesday night. I haven't worked out once this week with her. She's getting up at like 7 a.m., going to the gym, doing the 13, 25, 30, or whatever it is that she does, some workout. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, damn, I really suck. That's all I had to say. I'm sorry. I thought I had more of a goal, no, but you're good. That I was just, beautiful. I ended up. I ended up giving giving up on it. That was beautiful. I, it was beautiful. I it was just sad. It was just sad. Just sad. Just sad. <laughs> brought a tear to my eye. You know, Ben, I was a little disappointed when you came in with the apology. Uh, I thought you were also going to apologize for hating on my Hummer. Mm. Ooh. But I still haven't earned hating that on one yet. Hummer. Not what hating. Not hating. But just you know. Just making jokes. Just making jokes, which is fine. Just I'm cool with jokes, that. I'm cool with that. Making jokes. Having a good time. <laughs> Make laugh. Love. <laughs> My favorite Instagram post of all time is Ryan, like, posing up with the Hummer. Swipe right. Gucci Mane. <laughs> posed up with the Hummer. Like, swipe right. Paris Hilton. Dude. <laughs> like, another one with Ryan. <laughs> Dude, of all time, that's probably your favorite just because it's his most recent one. You can't remember all of his other good I ones? posted something else. You did do a good <laughs> You did do a good job with the carousel on that one. You yeah, found a lot good. of photos. I didn't know that pretty much any like 2000, 
2000s rapper or, or personality artist. or artist yeah had a hummer i did forget about some pretty big ones like bam margera had one there were so right. many people that text like why didn't you do this and i was like man i forgot that so many people had hummers i could only do 10 pictures ryan sorry for what i said about your hummer no it's okay it's no. okay so it just got disregarded just like that nah it's okay okay yep, well I tried. <laughs> I tried. Let the record have it that he tried. On, uh, on that in, last thing, on that Instagram picture, you know how it'll post also to Facebook? Mm, yeah. And I've done a couple Instagram posts that are funny for Instagram, like our Florida stats, where I'm like, I, you know, we oh, drank this. I, that, I was up at WAP. And I just like look through and it's like, you know, your grandma liked this. I'm like, ah, I really got to not post these to Facebook if they're kind of a little bit, you know, like that. But anyway, I go through and I think I ended up deleting that one and I post the Hummer one, didn't think anything of it. So I post it and my, uh, my grandma's neighbor who has been family friends with them for a long time. She's still got Facebook. She's still running with that. And she comments on the picture of Paris Hilton next to her Hummer and goes, who is this pretty lady? Doesn't look like your sister! Exclamation point. <laughs> genuine. She said that was a genuine question. She looked at across the old picture of Paris Hilton holding a Louis Vuitton purse and a Chihuahua, and went, and it's, "Who is this lovely like lady?" In, it's, it's in potato resolution, Grandma. That or sorry, Marlis. That is Paris Hilton. So, <laughs> the only girl it could have been was your sister. I I don't really know on that. I just. I'm sure that's the only association. She didn't question Gucci Mane? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What is, is this your friend? Who is the who's your friend? friend? Hold up. What who's does your she think for the rest friend? of them? <laughs> Man, she had to have been confused. <laughs> she Do thought you think you, she's on M&M? Bro. She thought you knew you or guys, were friends with all those people. Can you imagine how confused she was scrolling over and seeing all the pictures? <laughs> uh, that's funny dude. you know a couple podcasts ago i said that old people aren't funny and i take it back old funny are, are really funny without trying but funny. most of the time they're just being memes <laughs> you Love feel kind of bad for laughing which makes it more hilarious <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome all right all right guys let's wrap oh one more thing penis Personal electronic nicotine inhalant system. Penis. Do not forget <laughs> that. All right. And on that note, we're going to end the podcast here. Chocolates last a few moments and roses maybe last a week. How about a gift that lasts all year long? That's the gift of comfort with Tommy John. Get 20% off your first purchase at TommyJohn.com slash wide open right now for Valentine's Day. TommyJohn.com slash wide open.